Hey there, folks. Welcome back to The Overflow. My name is Micah Curtis. And I'm Alex Baldwin, also known as The Hat Man. And we are here to answer your questions from last week's podcasts that we sadly were not able to get to within the time limit. So, we're very happy to do so. We got some interesting ones this week. Um, so, Hat Man, I always leave this up to you. What would you like to start with? Po- uh, would you like uh, to start with podcasts? Would you like to start with politics or with entertainment this week? Uh, let's start with some entertainment this time. Okay. We've got about, let's see here, five questions. So this should be interesting. Um, mm-hmm. One of them is specifically for me. So let's go ahead and uh, just roll into it. Swordsman100 wants to know, considering the positive reactions from the pro comics gate side, have either of us checked out Boom's Power Rangers? Boom's Power Rangers? Yeah, Boom, Boom Comics. They did a Power Rangers run. It's uh, it's a it's an ongoing from what I've heard, and I've heard it's actually a really good action comic. But I've heard is really all I can say. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I'm not huge on Power Rangers, believe it or not. And I grew up, you know, during the the height of it. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I never really got into it. I mean, the most the most exposure that I've really had to Power Rangers was, you know, the occasional episode of Mighty Morphing and uh, the recent uh, movie, which was pretty all right. I haven't really uh, ventured into it beyond that. So as far as you know, comics especially, no, I wouldn't. And I don't know. Power Rangers really just isn't exactly my cup of tea either. So I don't know that I'd really check it out, to be honest. Yeah, I I will admit I was very big into it when I was a kid. Um I actually, like, took a few karate classes um, <laughs> just because of that, and I actually had a pretty good, uh, uh, in in Karate Kid, it's known as the crane kick. Um, it's a stepping front kick. Mm-hmm. I, I know how to throw it, and I actually, I, I if I get back in shape, I'll probably demonstrate it. But um, for those of you who are MMA fans, you'll actually know that that's the kick that Lyoto Machida knocked out Randy Couture with. When I was a kid, I was, I was, like, I don't know what it was about front kicks, but I, I freaking love them. And I, c- I still have enough flexibility where I can kind of do them. I need to lose weight so I can do them proper, though. But anyway, <laughs> but needless to say, I was a fan. I, I kind of dropped off around the time where they had, like, the big uh, samurai-looking m- Megazord. So, but anyway, I might have a look at it. Uh, like, the, these days, the whole... Power Rangers Super Sentai thing doesn't really appeal to me anymore. <laughs> it's it's something I kind of grew out of, like like I am with like Nintendo games. So, like they just they don't really grab me like they used to. So I don't know. Maybe I'll look at it. But I I have heard good things. Um, now people are gonna be like, get in shape, throw the front kick. We want to see it. So, <laughs> um, all right. So Crystal Wing twenty one forty nine had a question specifically for me. Wanting to know if okay. I think the Thunderbolts went largely untouched by the SJW writers at Marvel. I really don't know. The, the Thunderbolts, I wasn't even sure if there was like an ongoing. I haven't looked into it. So, I can't really say. This is kind of my problem. You know, like, the, uh, the issue that, I, that I've had with comic books recently has just been, you know, I... I freaking hate a lot of comics, so and I kind of hate the industry as a whole now. And I, I would like to see more diamonds in the rough. Thunderbolts was a was a book that I that I did like. You know, started out with uh, Kirk Bosiak, and then um, I really liked the Warren Ellis run and the way that they did that as well. Um, I remember the old crossover that they did called Best Intentions that was really good. Um, yeah, I, th- the Thunderbolts have always been an interesting team. Um, I would like to see them like an MCU Thunderbolts th- team at some point. But yeah, I'll, I'll have to look into it. Um, we'll see what happens. Speaking of uh, SJW Marvel, though, hmm. dear God, did we call it with Captain America or did we call it? I, I don't know. I haven't read the news. What's been going on? So, uh, leaked pages from uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates' Captain America run. Antifa's in it. The alt-right is pro-Hydra. And Cap's image is supposed to be tarnished by 
the 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 alt right equivalent. Oh, I mean, not to cap. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that that's what. Um, it's it's pretty much what we what we predicted it would be. Yeah, and at the end of the day, Tanahesi Coates is in a position where I'll be honest. I I think that you know I'm not going to buy a single issue of it. Whether or no. not I continue to boycott Marvel as a whole remains to be seen. I might give up on it and just not... I'm not the only one who's not going to be buying Captain America. I think that a lot of people are very upset about this. And that's that's one message I got when I did that video from a lot of people. was like, hey, I can't boycott Marvel as a whole. They've got good comics coming out, but I am going to boycott this Captain America crap. So, with me, that's good yeah. enough. But anyway, um, point being is that if, if Coates goes against America on a consistent basis and makes America look like a trashy place and throws in these Obama-era politics into the book, people are going to reject it. Oh, well, then they're going to reject it because he literally said that his vision of Captain America is someone like Barack Obama. That's patently ridiculous. Barack Obama hated the United States. Barack Obama went on an apology tour because he thought the United States was so fucking terrible. Yeah. It, yeah. It, mm. To hell with oh, that. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. All right. Um, the Almighty Lolly want to know what would be my who would be my ideal anime director for a Berserk series reboot. I don't know enough about anime directors to say, to be honest. I mean, yeah, neither it, do I. I guess if I had to pick somebody, it would be the guy who directed the films. Uh, who was it who did that? Um, let me look it up. Go for it. Google Foo. Or in this case, Wikipedia Foo. Well, that works too. Um, Toshiyuki Kuboka. And he did a phenomenal job on those films. So that would be who I would pick, is grab him and do... You could do what the Voltron series, the new one, is doing on Netflix and have, like, micro-seasons. You know, you have, like, six episodes every six months or something like that. That's how I would do it. You know, um, starting, pick up right where, right after Golden Age, um, and go with the Black Swordsman story, and then you go into Conviction, and then into the Hawk of the Millennium Empire, and then into Fantasia, which is where we're at right now, which... Um, and I know people ask me this constantly. Yes, I have read the most recent chapter of Berserk. Yes, I got the feels. I got the feels very hard. Because <laughs> I was listening to um, that album that everyone was recommending to me about a month and a half ago, um, Berserker by the Van Beast in Black. And the uh, there's a song on it called Born Again that is specifically about Guts and Casca and their relationship. And I was listening to that song when I read that chapter and my heart about, like, jumped out of my chest and went, STOP! You're killing me! So, yes, it, it was it was an intense experience. But anyway... I presume something bad happened? No, something very good, but th there's an allusion to something bad, but it's... Uh, it, in what... In, in manga chapters are like, what, 16 pages or something like that? In, something I'm, I'm like tearing that. up thinking about it. Holy shit. I just realized that. But the... Um, it alludes towards something heartbreaking, and that in and of itself, because because let's let's think about this. I know that you've paid attention to the story. I don't. Did you see my uh, Twitter earlier? Uh, no. Okay, I have a Kentaro Miura Berserk poster behind me. I'm gonna move my camera so the audience can see it. Of the first shot of the Berserker armor when Guts started wearing it. Nice. So. Needless to say, I'm a fan of the series, but um, and I love Kitaro Miura's art. It's so so freaking detailed. But anyway, I'm rambling. But I know that you've paid attention a little bit to what's happened past Golden Age as well, and yes. or at least I've tried to. Casca is no longer a potato. Yes, I know that so, much. But um, she hadn't regained all of her memory yet after being mm. unpotatoed. She's kind of like she starts um. She's kind of like... She kind of acts like she does pre-eclipse. You know? And... Interesting. When she sees Guts, and she sees kind of the energy he's carrying with him, the eclipse starts to come back to her. Mm. 
so where it goes from here, I don't know. But it, it, it was a very, very heavy, heavy issue. Like, 16 pages, again, like, my heart was, like, thumping really hard. I'm like, holy crow. I've never, you know, I've never experienced this in, a, in in any sort of, like, manga or comic or anything like that since the first time I read the ending of Devilman. So, God, Muir is amazing. All right, um... But anyway, I hope that answers the question, Almighty Lolly, about who my ideal anime director for the Berserk series reboot would be. Hatman, are, are you kind of on the same page there? I mean, I, I certainly don't have any arguments against it. And again, I don't know much about anime directors either, so... Yeah. Did you see Golden Age, the, the, the film trilogy? I... I don't think I saw the whole trilogy. Well, they're all on Netflix now. Then I have no excuses. <laughs> no, you don't. That's your project. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that on the podcast next week. Is uh, We'll talk about that Berserk trilogy. I'll rewatch it myself, because I love them. It's so good. I love the whole series. So I have a feeling that this piece of art behind me, like, of all my posters, I put, like, I, I have framed most of them. And I bought a, a big Dark Souls one, too, which is really cool. But I have a feeling that, like, if I ever start dating again, that'll probably be the one that everyone asks me about. It's like, ooh, what is that? So, it looks so good. <laughs> okay, I'm nerding out. All right. Um, so, that that's pretty much that. Uh, Damien X247 wants to know, um, thoughts on Angry Joe's Street Fighter game? Wait, what? Yeah, that's, that's my thoughts, too. I thought you would know something about it. Nope. No, I really don't keep up with Angry Joe anymore, so... And I, I have a reason not to do so. So... Yeah. Um, what 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 is this about? Is he like making a Street Fighter? Oh wait, no, is that Street Fighter like the board game or something? Um, Angry Joe's Street Fighter the miniatures game pops over four hundred thousand in one day. Um, it's a Street Fighter tabletop. And why? I I don't know. But does he have? the licensing to do it? I'm not sure. I I would hope the miniatures actually look really good. Like, they're very detailed. He's obviously put quite a bit of effort into this. Um... I'm not very happy with Joe because of the, uh... The, the way he was talking about Trump voters. Because um, here's the thing, and I don't know... Uh, somebody should tweet this at him. Joe, you hired a lot of white dudes at BT, man. <laughs> so blaming me for the way the country is is a little bit silly. But regardless, and I'll say this to Joe as well. If you, can, if you could put in 120%, I know that you have the drive to make something be great. So good luck. S sincerely, good luck. But that's, I guess that, that concludes my thoughts on it. I'm about to say, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not huge into Street Fighter anyway. I'm just, jeez, I'm just not huge into a lot of things that we've been talking about. You need to, you need to, um, you need to get good, Hat Man. I need to broaden my damn horizons and some shit. Well, when I move to North Carolina, hopefully soon, that'll, that'll definitely have to happen. We, we will. Go to a cool comic shop in Raleigh and play. Um... Oh God! I was just thinking of sitting sitting you down, and making you play Dark Souls again. Well, well, there's there's that, but there's also an arcade machine. Is it Marvel Superheroes? I think. If it's the first of the versus games, yes, it's the one where Thanos is the boss. Yes. That yeah, that's it. That's my favorite Marvel I think I posted, game. So I think I posted a picture of that on on Twitter. But yeah, there's there's a comic shop in in Raleigh that's got that that cabinet sitting in the middle of it. So, really? Oh God! Yes. I'll have to see if I can still beat it on one quarter. Because that that of all the Marvel versus games, that's the one I'm best with. Um, Spider Man is godlike in that game. Him and yes. him and, him and Cap. Yes. 
I'm no good with Cap though. I was a whole lot better with Spider Man. Well, Cap Cap's tough because in his, in that game, all of his motions are half circles, not quarters. So yeah. he's a little harder to use. But once you get used to him, he's freaking great. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and move on to the next question. Um, Eclectic1995 wanted to know, with the growing influences of anime in our entertainment, do we think that we will get to the point where American cartoons become indistinguishable from Japanese anime? I think we're starting to get there. Um, I think that... I don't, one I don't thing think that I ever see, get indistinguishable. Well... Maybe. I, well, here, let me let me give an example. Um, the most recent Voltron series, mm-hmm. a lot of anime elements from it. Um, the way that the action was pro- was posed in um, the the most recent Avengers animated series, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, not the not Assemble, um, very anime inspired. Because if you think about the way that like Western cartoons used to do action, a lot of things were obscured, and anime didn't never did that. And then, as time has gone on, we've seen more of that. Not to mention, like, with Voltron specifically, that felt like an anime. I, I was surprised it wasn't. I was surprised it was a Western studio. So, regardless, I, I think if that happens, it'll still be a long time from now, though. Because it's sort of a back-and-forth thing, because a lot of anime tropes and ideas were first inspired by the West... And then yeah. they took the, put their own spin on it, and now they did certain things with the way the action was shot and different concepts, and now the West is starting to pick up on that. So, I don't know. It's a back-and-forth thing. Do I ever think they'll ever be indistinguishable? Yeah, if, if it does, it does, it would be way down the line. I don't think it's going to happen. I just... I, I don't. I mean, you'll, you'll find inspiration from, from anime. Uh, I mean... Think back to, to stuff like uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender, for God's sake. I mean, that was really emulating uh, the anime style. Yeah. But I, I don't think we'll get to a point where it's indistinguishable because American animation likes to take a little bit more uh, stylistic risk than Japanese animation does. If if anything, we we might see more risks being taken with uh, with anime, and as a result, you know, maybe then they'll start to resemble each other. I mean, I'm I'm thinking of like um, uh, panty and stocking featuring garter belt, like that. That seems more inspired by uh, Western animation. And it still, you know, keeps a lot of uh, anime tropes. So, I don't know. I think I think maybe we'll get to a point where they start borrowing enough from each other that they'll seem indistinguishable. But I don't think, like, one style is going to dominate the other. Because, I mean, you're always going to have Americans that, that don't like just the anime art style. Like, any of them. So... Fair enough. All right. On to politics. So, what's politics? Yes, let's start off with Knox the Last. Uh, He had, I think, probably the most interesting question. What are our thoughts on the FBI raiding Trump's lawyer's office? So, what were the records that they were seeking? Like, first it was reported that they were looking for stuff related to uh, the Stormy Daniels payment. Yeah, basically. And then it was like they were looking for some other type of record. Like, nothing is making sense. Like, all the stories keep keep changing on me. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's hard to keep up. But I remember the initial the initial story being that they were seeking records related to uh, Michael Cohen's payment to Stormy Daniels. Yeah, because it would it could possibly violate ki- uh, campaign finance law. Yeah. The problem is is that a, a, it seems like a lot of what they're looking for would violate attorney-client privilege. And that's sort of where the big yes. stink is coming from, and that's where, where I'm concerned. Yes. You know, well, the problem is you can't you can't protect um, 
you can't protect those communications if it's used in the uh, facilitation of illegal activity. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then they do have reason to go after it. My question is, um, does that mean that they're prepared to um, press charges? I would imagine. Um, my where I'm at with this is, it, it at this point it feels like desperation. Like they're looking for just something to make this whole investigation seem like it wasn't a giant waste of time. Yeah, it seems like it. Because let's face it, the whole Russia thing went nowhere, and it's still going nowhere. Yeah, I mean, well, and, well, and it now... obviously is because this is where this is what they've switched to. First, he were looking. He was um, he was looking for Russia stuff. Now he's hunting down a hundred. How a hundred and thirty grand got from Trump's lawyer to a porn star. A porn star that has well exceeded her uh, fifteen minutes. Yes. Well, it, it's fifteen minutes that the media are trying to stretch out, and oh yeah, Mueller is for he he's chasing ghosts, in my opinion. And I it think that, seems that way. yeah, and I think that the problem here is, is that it he's it's it's over. You inc you incriminated a couple of guys who were crooked, Manafort and another guy. Okay, but obviously you didn't have anything on Trump, or you'd have him by now. Manafort was right next to the president during the election, up until he got fired and Bannon took over. He was right next yep. to him. You invest. You in was on up there too. On top of that, you you investigated the the meeting he had with that Ru with that Russian person who said it was about Russian adoptions or something along those lines. And because yes. on, on the pretense that she had some dirt on Hillary Clinton, so you got everything you were looking for. Obviously, you got nothing on Trump. Now you're looking at this. Well, if the, if it was paid from the, uh, Trump's lawyers personal funds, that's the end. There was no campaign finance violation. This is this investigation is done with. At this point, I, I am of the opinion that Rod Rosenstein needs to put an end to this. Because all it is, is it, it's going nowhere. It's 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 a waste of time and, and, and funds. It really is. You're, you're hunting a, a giant nothing burger. Meanwhile, you've got Comey on television... For better or worse, admitting to obstructing justice in regards yes. to this Hillary Clinton issue. It's on yes. paper in his fucking book. She should I mean, be in he, jail and so, so should he, in my I mean, opinion. He outright said that he was expecting her to become president and that affected the investigation. Like, that... Come on. That's, that is definitely something... And on top of that, you've got, like, a ton of other shady shit that was going on. Need I remind you of the tarmac meeting with Loretta Lynch? Yeah. I mean, there was a ton of, of shady shit that was going on. We talked about this and a year and a half ago. We conveniently, right after, right after everyone just started raising hell about no, no charges being brought forward, the Russia thing starts to kick into high gear. Yes, exactly. And and here's the thing. The fact of the matter is, we are in a position, and I said this a year ago, and I'll say it again, we are in a position where if these sorts of people are not indicted for what they are doing wrong, what does it say about the way we Americans view justice. It says that if you reach a certain point in the government, if you run for the presidency, or you reach a certain point in the Democratic Party, you cannot be prosecuted. That's bullshit. That's fucking ridiculous. It is... No one not, is above the law. No one, and that is not what the founders had in mind from the get-go, is that the same crimes that I could be charged for as an independent citizen, the great, the highest of the politicians could be charged for as well, and convicted. 
This is something where I disagreed with Ben Shapiro when he said in his speech at CPAC, as he said, Hillary P Clinton is not in a prison of her own making. Yes, she's in such a prison in her million dollar house with her million dollars of crap. Oh, she's suffering so bad. Give me a fucking break, man. She gets, no offense she to gets Shapiro, paid. but Jesus Christ. She gets paid to go on tours around the world and bitch about how she lost the election and how she deserved to win. And it's such a crime against her that she didn't get her turn. Conor well, McGregor who, can't even get paid for losing as much as she has. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. Who fuckity who? She needs to be in an orange jumpsuit. You know what? Reopen Alcatraz and just shove her in it. <laughs> there you go. There's a mansion for her. Yeah. Private mansion. All the space she could want. God. All right. Let let the Mueller investigation run its course, and and when he says that there's nothing to it, that you can't, he can't uh, draw up charges against against Donald Trump. Then let that be the end of it, and let all the the leftists out there bitch and moan that oh. He was hiding evidence, or you didn't look into this enough. Just let it run its course, and and let the bitches bitch. There's nothing to it, yeah. and if there turns out to be something to it, then whatever. Then then let justice run its course. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Exactly. All right. Eclectic nineteen ninety five wanted to know: Is narcissism a mental illness? And if so then do you guys think that it is becoming or already a big issue for the American people and and the culture? All right, so I think that part of this comes from when I uh, talked about Bashar al-Assad and said that he's a narcissist. And, you know, basically mm. meaning I, I truly believe that he does, that he is somebody who has an NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. Yes. Now, here's the thing. NPD is rare. But it is something that we oftentimes do see in tyrannical leaders, is they show signs of it. Hitler did, Saddam Hussein did, Stalin did, Lenin did, so on and so forth. Like you, you analyze their behaviors and you'll you'll see that. But it's a it's something you don't see v that often. There's fewer than, fewer than two hundred thousand cases per year. That but that's narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissism, being self indulgent, being up your own ass for better or worse is a personality flaw. That's a little yes. different. Um, this has nothing to do with brain chemistry. It has to do with how you're growing up. Um, so there is a mental illness, but I don't think that that's what most Americans are have an issue with. I think that um, the problem is we live in a culture where there's a lot of people who are our age, you know, from... You know, Hatman's about five years younger than I am, but um, where... A lot of people grew up, got trophies for existing, mm -hmm. got um, recognition for things that they were told they're special when honestly they're not. They had value thrown on things that really hold no value in the first place, so on and so forth. So what that does is it creates a you know, narcissism. It creates a sense of self-importance that really is based on nothing. Yeah. You know, unwarranted self-importance. There was an interesting uh statement from Matt Walsh that he had made that oddly enough I had agreed with. Uh let me pull it up real quick. Um about the difference between the left and the right these days. Um let's see here. Is that I oh, um the left is demand demands affirmation. They don't they don't they don't demand to be taken seriously because of what they've earned, they demand to be taken seriously because they exist. Okay, here's the thing. Even respect is a two-way is a two-way street. Even respect is something that has to be earned in turn. You give and you get. Mm -hmm. So even then, I don't respect you because you exist. If your first interaction with me is telling me to kill myself. My first inter my first interaction or re reaction to you will be a middle finger straight to your face. 
because you started the conversation, you know, insulting me. Why would I respect you? Why, why would I have any respect for you at that point? You know, and, and that is something that a lot of people don't seem to understand. And that's not a necessarily a left thing either. I think that's, that's, a, that's a millennial thing. You know, you think there's a lot of younger people who think that they can say whatever they want and then you're just supposed to just take it. That that there's not gonna be no reaction to it. You know, mm-hmm. that's like if you if you if you go into somebody's chat and you say gas the Jews and they don't ban you, it's because they've set a different set of rules. But somebody else might, because that's a rather crass statement, even if you're just kidding. Even if you're just looking for a reaction, if you're just trolling. Some people just don't want to hear it. And they don't have to. You know? If you're going to fight for the right of free speech... Uh, just as just a random thought. If you're going to fight for the right of free speech, you also have to fight for the right of... Uh, of freedom of association. You have to be willing to... To, um, to acknowledge two basic human rights is that people do have the right to speak. They have the right, by God, to say whatever the heck they want. But, people also have the right, given to them by God, to interact with whatever they want. So, anyway, that was just a random thought. Uh, Something that I think a lot of people these days on the internet really aren't understanding. But, um, anyway, back to to the narcissism thing. I, I think that we, because we live in a culture where a lot of people think that they have a right to be heard and acknowledged by everyone and respected by everyone? Not the case. Actually, it does tie in. You do have the right to be heard. You have the right to speak. I'm sorry. You have the right to speak. You don't have the right to be taken seriously. Exactly. You don't have the right for people to associate with you. You know, you don't have the right to come on my lawn and piss on it and not me pull a shotgun on you, you know, or, or my handgun. You don't have, you don't have, there, your rights have at that point ended because mine have started. And I think that that's something that a lot of young people just don't understand. Is that you have your rights and they should be respected, but the other guy across from you is a human being too and they have rights as well. If you acknowledge yep. the concept of inalienable rights, you have to acknowledge the concept of humanity. If you understand the concept of humanity, you realize that the person across from you has the exact same rights you do and they should respect yours and you should respect theirs. But that's that's really the end of it when it comes to respect. You know, everything else has to be earned. Prime example, um, the Parkland kids. Oh yeah. I mean, they. Hey man, you're cutting out. They have they clearly have no respect for any views contrary to their own. Uh, outright say that. You know, anyone who holds contrary views are, you know, a- akin to child murderers. You know, they have blood on their hands. They're yeah. the ones that pulled the trigger. And how do you, how do you respond to that? Here's I mean, mine. That... It's middle finger. <laughs> but but seriously, like how how are you expected to to have a discussion with with someone like that? I mean, someone who thinks that, that their views are so correct that anyone who would disagree... Yeah, well, and, and that's that's the general issue, is that we find ourselves with a bunch of kids who experience something traumatic and then they think that the whole world owes them something, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't even know if, that's, if it's limited to the kids, though. Like, it seems to be just the state of debate in America now. I mean, look at look at how people have just lost their minds in general since Trump got elected. Mm. I mean, and you can't you can't have a reasoned debate with with someone who honestly believes that you're not allowed to associate, or at least not supposed to associate, with anyone who has uh, contrary political views. Yeah, I'm and even sure. then, it, it goes to the to Capitol Hill as well. Did you see the recent yeah. uh, uh, questioning of Cory Booker of our next possible Secretary of State? Oh dear God! Did you did you see that? Because it was ridiculous. No, I I, I didn't, but I can imagine. Oh how, yeah, he, he flat out it. asked him, "Do you think that that homosexual sex is an abomination?" Basically asking, "Oh my God, do you, what do you the believe hell in, does that have to, to do? do with anything?" 
Exactly. It's ridiculous. And Cory Booker uh, should be impeached for that. I would, I would, that would be the first person. If I were in. highly inappropriate. Censured at the very least. uh, That's highly inappropriate. He's not the only one who's done it. Bernie Sanders did the exact same thing to somebody else. I would have looked at him dead in the eyes and said, you should be impeached for asking, asking me that question. I have freedom of religion. I can believe whatever I want. Not to mention, my beliefs on what somebody does in their bedroom shouldn't matter anyway because they have the right to privacy. I have the right to, asso- to, to associate with whatever I, whoever I choose. I have the right to believe as I choose via the First Amendment. How fucking dare you sit there and say that I have to believe a certain set of ideas in regards to gay sex of all things to serve my country? It's it's, fucking it's ridiculous. Turning a, it's turning into a goddamn purity test. Exactly. Because that's what this is. They. It's something straight out of the Nazis, and they, and it's, it's so funny. The people who who. Oh God, Winston Churchill had it right. The 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 next fascists will be called anti-fascists. That's mm-hmm. exactly what they are. They are fascists. They believe that you must pass a certain purity test before you can serve in the government. And you must serve the party and only the party. It, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And it is born of the same narcissistic idea. Absolutely ridiculous. All three Ab- Abrahamic religions are against homosexuality. All three of them. If, if Trump had put somebody of Muslim descent in that position to be Secretary of State, would would Cory Booker have asked the same question? I think not. Oh, hell no. Hell no. Disgraceful human being. Fuck Cory Booker. All right. We need to move on to the next question. Um, our final question, actually. The Swordsman 100. Oh, okay. um, what is the likelihood of the left's alienation of not as far of a left of voters because of Trump backfiring? I think it's already starting to. I mean, you look at Dave Rubin. Yeah, you are. Dave Rubin was part of the Young Turks and is now one of their most vocal opponents. What does that tell you? He's considered See, he's considered is... a heretic by them. He's considered... Um, I, I referenced him in my most recent video on comic books, is that he, is, he has been unpersoned. He is seen as a subhuman. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see more of that. Christina Hoff Summers is another good example. Brett Weinstein exactly. is another great example. Him and his wife. Yep. See, the problem is, while the left is cannibalizing their own, the ones that aren't eaten are just becoming even more emboldened by it. Yes. I mean, it is it is essentially a race to the bottom here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you look at what's happening to Starbucks right now. Starbucks is the is oh, every every lefty's God. favorite place place that exists. And then one person screws up one thing in regards to a possible customer. And now you've got I think it's like Suddenly, eight thousand eight thousand stores are every going to be closed. Single store in the US, yes. Yeah. Closed over a purity test. If I if I was a local coffee shop, I would be praising God right now. I'd be like, dude, yeah. I'm not, I'm gonna mark down my prices because I'm the only gig exactly. in town. I'd be having I'd <laughs> somewhere the I'd heads of Dunkin' special. Donuts and and Krispy Kreme are laughing their balls off because it's hilarious. Absolutely. Instead of firing the guy, who he probably did get fired. But instead of just firing oh, yeah, the guy yeah. who screwed up, they, they they are putting their entire store through a purity test because, because the leftists are boycotting them. Yeah. One protest it's that hilarious. said Starbucks is anti-black. Starbucks as a corporation is anti-black. Not just not just <laughs> one person that screwed up. It's it's never the individual's fault. And this is this is the problem that we keep seeing with the left. It's never the fault of an individual. Mm-mm. It's always the fault of the collective. Absolutely. That's the collectivist mindset. That's where it gets you. It's mm-hmm. not a white person's fault. It's white people's fault. It's not the fault of a corporation. It's capitalism's fault. 
it's not one man, it's men. Mm -hmm. It's not one Republican or a handful of Republicans, it's the Republican Party. It's not one shooter, it's the entire the entire conglomerate of gun owners and gun manufacturers. I mean, fuck's sake. Meanwhile, you look at how Chick-fil-A handled their controversies. It kept mm-hmm. on trucking. Yeah. And New York City is still trying to bring that shit back. Mm. But <laughs> it ain't working. <laughs> There's there, there are Chick-fil-A's everywhere, people. The most <laughs> now available in New York City, you can enjoy the same delicious sandwiches that Hatman and I have been enjoying for years. Yes. And I mean, you will get to enjoy them because they are great. I remember I I was in Chicago a couple of years ago, and there I was on a date with a girl, and um, I asked a favor of her. There's a there's a Chick Fil A downtown, and it was clo- they're obviously closed on Sundays, and Sunday was the day I was there. And she, uh, I asked her, I'm like, could you do me a favor and take a picture of me in front of this restaurant? And she goes, why? I'm like, just trust me. <laughs> So she did. I tweeted it out there. Um, actually, no, no, no. I don't think I tweeted it out. But I'm like, I said, showed this to some friends of mine. I'm like, this is proof that you can't stop American industry. Demand is ultimately what's going to drive things. And you should never give into the purity tests of the left. You should. You never should. Do not no, give them absolutely an inch. Not. Don't give them an yeah. inch. They will. They will not take a mile. They will take. They will take your livelihood. You want you know that scene in in the Dark Knight Rises where like all the rich people's homes are getting ransacked? That's mm-hmm. basically what they want to do to you. Yeah, pretty much. Bane, for better or worse, was an Antifa guy. In a lot of ways. So, Batman, warrior for capitalism, <laughs> <laughs> which would make Who'd sense. Well, uh, that would actually make sense. He's a billionaire. Oh uh, yeah, you know that is true. He is, he is a billionaire. All right. Well, that is the last question we had for today. All right. But goodness, we had some good ranting in today, to say the least. Oh yes, absolutely. Well, folks, we really appreciate you watching um, the overflow once again. We will be back, hopefully, on Saturday this time instead of Sunday to discuss more insanity because that seems to be what most of our life is dedicated to these days. Uh, It certainly seems like it, yeah. Yeah, but we enjoy bringing it to you. It's quite a bit of fun. So, any final words, Hatman? Um, yeah. Don't be a dick. (laughs) Are you you citing Will Will Wheaton's law? No. (laughs) No. He does, his name does not deserve to be on on that anymore. No, I'm. I this is this is an older quote from uh, William Shakespeare. <laughs> there Don't we be a go. dick. There we go. <laughs> my my final words are this: Collectivism is the death of civility. We hope you guys Amen. really enjoyed everything. Well, of course, we wouldn't mind getting your thoughts on um, some of the things we discussed today in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. My name is Micah Curtis. And I'm Alex Baldwin, also known as the Hat Man. We'll see you guys next week. Davis Volt. Davis Volt.